I think I heard Lincoln Riley call his defensive line room fat. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Hulkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC part of the Locked On Network, your first listen every day, whether you're watching the show on YouTube or wherever you're going to download your podcast. Always remember the show is free and never forget how much I appreciate your support. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers, join today and you're going to get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to get started. Lincoln Riley didn't really say that. What he did say was um, the defensive line room is up 340 pounds from where they started in January. I interpret that as he's got a bunch of fat guys in his defensive line room, but in a good way. Quote, this is what Lincoln Riley said on the Trojans Live radio show. Don't forget, spring camp practice today, if you're watching the show on Tuesday, March the 19th. This is what Lincoln Riley said. Our defensive line is up 340 pounds from where they started in January. Mind you, that's just one position group. It's fun to, it's fun to just kind of see that. Each group had their own goals, but we hit some of the marks we set for our guys. Now, I had to break out the calculator. I did the math. Just off the top of my head, uh, there's 19 guys um, who will eventually be on the roster designated defensive line. Um, not including any portal in transfers that haven't uh, come ab- come aboard yet. Uh, but there's 17 on campus right now. And if you take 340 pounds, you divide it by 17, that means each one on average has gained 20 pounds. That's a lot of beef per dude and that, in a short amount of time. So they're getting the job done. They're, as Coach Riley said, they're they're meeting their goals. And that's what we wanted to hear, right? Hopefully, um, all the position groups are becoming, you know, I'm going to use the term, quote unquote, fatties at the dinner table. Just getting bigger, thicker, getting ready to play in the Big Ten Conference. You also mentioned that Miller Moss's performance changed his vision um, at the quarterback position. And it happened with, uh, you know, because of what Miller did in the Holiday Bowl. He said, we wanted to go older, but then Miller, uh, you know, he had that performance in, in the Holiday Bowl, and in a sense, he's like, hey, coach, hold my beer. And then Riley had to kind of shift gears and says, you know what, now we need someone younger, uh, but we we want someone who who has experience, who's actually played in the game, and and that's why they shifted and focused uh, their attention more towards Jaden Mayaba. Coach Riley's uh, approach and his message so far, I'm going to let everybody know that what he's been telling the team and about the competition, look, if you've been here or you just got here, prove it. Uh, we want guys who are going to step up and do it right now. In other words, don't talk about it. Don't tell me this is you know what we're going to strive to do. He's looking for the guys who are just going to do it. Don't sing it. Bring it. He was also asked about... Um, the defensive installation during spring camp. We know it's going to be slow. Uh, the slow install, We've been really emphasizing that. What Coach Riley um, clarified was it's all about giving the attention to the details. He used the metaphor about um, how you, you, if you want to aim to go to the moon, you can't miss by an inch because if you do, you're going to miss by, you know, hundreds of thousands of miles. So it's got to be right. You know, so just keep practicing is what it's all about. That's what he was, you know, referring to with regards to the slow install with the defense. Think of it this way. Your old high school coach, football, whatever. Most of us played football in high school or growing up. Uh, and that that voice that just kept saying, do it again. Run it again till you get it right. Keep going. Line up. Do it again. That's what Lincoln Riley and and Dant and Lynn are going to be referring to when they're doing the slow install. Uh, one thing that 
Coach Riley um, really liked about Coach Danton Lynn and why he went after him so aggressively is he liked how um, Lynn's defenses adjusted. Um, and how they adjusted from week to week going up against uh, going up against different offenses. Um, hopefully we're going to see that same type of improvement at USC just as quickly, even though it's going to take a slow time to install. And then see those adjustments on a week-to-week -week basis. The other thing that I really liked about Coach Roddy, he, he was a little candid here and he was honest. He said, look, you know, the interior offensive line, uh, we didn't hit our potential in 2023. I guess that's a nice way of saying, hey, they ever perform. But what he did uh, confirm, and you know, this is old news to my everyday listeners and viewers of Locked on USC, but Coach Riley, from the horse's mouth, he confirmed it. Jonah Monheim is moving to the center position. He's going to step inside and play center for us. It will be great for his career long term as well. So I thought it was a really mature decision on his part. Close quote. If you happen, if you have the chance to uh, watch the uh, Inside the Trojan Huddle show on YouTube live, um, Jordan Moore, Keely Ewer, and uh, Sean Cody, <laughs> they they acted surprised. But like I said, my everydayers, you already knew this. I've been telling you about it all off season. Remember, this was supposed to be the plan last year. But the tackle situation on uh, along the offensive line, both sides, uh, it kind of it kind of forced some shuffling the pieces. Uh, Coach Riley also talked about how Emmanuel Prion looked his best um, in the bowl game and how he made huge strides. Uh, he also talked about how you're going to. USC fans, you're going to get Gino Quinones back. He mentioned Kill Switch, Killian O'Connor. Elijah Page, he mentioned talked how he got into the bowl game and dominated. He, he actually said he dominated two times. Quote, uh, we're really excited about some of the young guys on the interior. Alani Noah, Amos Talalele, Micah Manuelos. We're going to get Gino back, which uh, will be great after getting injured early in the season. Uh, Killian O'Connor, and then I mean right tackle, excuse me, and then I mean tackle-wise, shoot, Elijah Page came into the Holiday Bowl and dominated. I mean dominated. He probably played the best game that a tackle played for us all last year against a quality defensive line. So we were really pleased with his progress. Uh, Mason Murphy came in and did some really good things in that game as well. We're excited to see Tobias. We've got Lolo, Taaga, and some of the uh, young guys that are here. It's an exciting, it's an exciting group. It is close quote. Yeah, again, if you watch the show, you can. Uh, I think you definitely sensed the excitement, the spring euphoria that was in uh, Coach Riley's, in Coach Riley's breath, uh, the way he was expressing himself. Uh, and he also said the, the the group itself, the offensive line group, they're, they're playing with a chip on their shoulder. I'm excited to watch them compete, excited to watch them play. They've got an edge and a chip on their shoulder. You have to have that. That position, certainly at this school, uh, we've got to take that, we've got to take a step there. And that, and this group's very focused on that. I'm not sure if he was referring to the entire offensive line, the tackle spots, the interior group. I think that's a good general uh way of looking things for the entire offensive line. So Let's not leave any ambiguity. Miller Moss was on after Lincoln Riley. And I'll tell you what, there is, no, if I was Miller Moss and I had the headphones on, there's nothing better than listening to Pete Arbogast sing your praises as you're being introduced onto the radio. I mean, not one, not two, not three, not four, but five, six touchdowns. How do you do? Yeah. Pete Arbogast, he's got some golden pipes. Uh, Miller Moss, when he was on there, he said that uh, he was talking about the offseason, how the team basically got one week off uh, after the bowl game. And then it was pretty much eight weeks uh, straight, just, you know, winter conditioning workouts. There was even a hell week thrown in there. The team is just getting bigger, faster, stronger. And uh, he went on to say that Benny Wiley is making it hard on them. 
Miller actually groaned Benning Wiley's name. And you understand why. I mean, he's got those guys doing the Coliseum run, uh, bear crawls. Have you ever done bear crawls? Better them than me. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> they are brutal. Uh, they also asked uh, Miller Moss about Jonah's transition to the center to the center spot. Miller said, "Hey, you know what? Brett Nealon, he's going to be at USC's pro day, so he's been out helping out during PRPs with Jonah." Uh, the football acumen between Miller Moss, Jonah Monheim, it probably qualifies for the Mensa Club range. There's a high IQ up the middle, starting with the center and a quarterback. Uh, that's a good thing. Those are two great qualities you want at those two positions. Um, they complimented Miller, the, the, the host. Jordan Moore and Sean Cody and Keeley, they they complimented Miller about his patience, uh, especially in the era in the era of impatience, uh, sticking around, competing over and over again. And Miller said, Look, ultimately, he weighed his options and chose what was best for him. And he mentioned the, uh, the you know, there was that that COVID learning curve. Just a reminder for everybody, Miller Moss was an early entry at USC, and he came in um, with the experience of a junior high school, not a junior high school, a junior experience starting in high school because he missed his senior year. He was going to start at modern day his senior year, but again, everyone caught the cold and California canceled high school football for pretty much everybody. Anyways, uh, he said it made him a better player uh, because of the struggles. You know, he that self doubt that creeped in. He he overcame it. He was asked about his best childhood memory, um, being a lifelong USC fan, and he brought up the Sam Darnold to Deontay Burnett uh, touchdown pass in the Rose Bowl. Mind you, Miller was in junior high at the time. <laughs> they were goofing around with the uh, taking the whole kid angle. It's remember Miller Moss is what twenty. Um. So they asked him, say, how do you improve on what you did against Louisville? You know, you six touchdowns. You know, how do you how do you top that going into your next game? And Miller's way of approaching things is it's always about the next play, regardless of that play's outcome. Miller's maturity and his approach precisely exactly what you want from a starting quarterback. Uh, and he also touched on something I talked about recently on this show uh, about his second team reps and the chemistry he's developed with the wide receivers who blew up with him uh, against Louisville in the bowl game. Talking about, you know, the four freshmen last year, Zachariah, Deuce, Makai, Jacoby Lane. Well, that's now just going to carry on over uh, into spring camp because all those guys are first team reps. So their repetitions in practice are going to increase. That's going to be great. They go from great freshmen to super sophomores, and they're already familiar with the quarterback throwing passes to them. <laughs> We're going to have a lot more to talk about on spring camp uh, in the next segment, especially what is the uh, offensive players and coaches going to talk about? That's coming up next. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. The Houston Cougars can only be described as an armada. This top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets. So it really, it's no wonder they earned a number one seed on Selection Sunday following their debut season with the Big 12 Conference. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. You know what I like about Fire TV? Turn on your TV if it's a smart TV and it's already there. Or if you don't have one, plug in a Fire Stick. Plugs right into the back. You're fired up. You're ready to go. It's that easy. And Fire TV is your destination for sports. 
from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Whether it's the opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournaments, you're going to want to have Fire TV. And did you know that Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels that will deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free? And that includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Check out Fire TV channels and Fire TV and the Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com forward slash locked on fire TV. Real quick reminder, go check out the Locked Bracket Breakdown Show wherever you download your podcast. Andy Patton, Isaac Shade, they're going to tell you everything you want to know. All right. Hopefully everybody is making this episode of Locked on USC your first listener watch of the day. If you are, uh, then by the end of today, March 19th, I'm going to have attended the first day of spring camp. And by the way, if you like what you're hearing, you like what you're watching, do me a favor, especially on YouTube, I need to become a subscriber. It's quick, it's easy. Click the subscribe button, smash the thumbs up like you're the Hulk, and don't forget to hit that bell notification button. That way you're not going to miss an episode, and all the updates are going to come from spring practice. So. Following spring practice, uh, the media gets to talk with, uh, on Tuesdays, selected offensive players. We'll get Coach Riley, and we're going to get Coach Dennis Simmons on the first Tuesday. And they're going to rotate things every, you know, each Tuesday throughout the uh, throughout spring camp. But Tuesday's offense, Thursday's defense. And then Saturday, we get uh, Coach Riley via Zoom. So on Tuesday, again, just to repeat, we're going to get Coach Riley, we're going to get Coach Dennis Simmons, and we're going to get some selected offensive players. Now, depending on who is out there uh, on offense, uh, Jonah will be there. I anticipate uh, he'll be lined up against the wall. Same with Miller Moss. Um, and I think we all know what both are going to be asked about. Uh, Miller, is going to, we're going to ask him about the Holiday Bowl, the competition, how it's going so far with Jaden Maiava. Speaking of uh, Jaden Maiva, I, I wonder if he'll be made available. Uh, because, And I, I bring it up because transfers usually like they like to ease them in a little bit. But that's the quarterback position. Might be uh, They might throw him to the wolves. Uh, the freshmen don't count on speaking to them this spring. They go through a sort of an orientation process before, uh, before the media gets to talk to them. Now, as far as Jonah, uh, he's going to be asked about Coming back to play center, no doubt, right? Uh, Miller Moss, this is what he uh, said on the Trojans Ray, Trojans Live radio show. Uh, and I, I kind of alluded to it earlier. Brett is doing Pro Day on Wednesday. So he's come back and worked with Jonah a little bit, which has been awesome throughout the offseason. He was obviously a great player for us, a real cerebral guy. And I think Jonah can sim similarly pick that up. He's a really, really intelligent guy. Obviously, he has all the physical tools to be a great lineman, but super excited about him in that role. Takes him to the step off the quarterback as well with a really smart guy up there, close quote. Again, Jonah will be calling the uh, the signals for the rest of the offensive linemen. That's what Miller's talking about. You need somebody there that knows, that knows the playbook. And Jonah's played every offensive line position now. Dennis Simmons, Coach Dennis Simmons, the wide receiver coach, he'll be up there. Um, one of the topics, obviously, hey, you've got seven guys available this spring. How does it feel? <clears throat> I say it like that because I used to feel bad at times for uh, Coach Roy Manning. Uh, his group was always thin, that the edge rushers. Um, not so much anymore. And I, I looked it up. I don't know if Coach Manning's taking a year away, but he still hasn't hooked up with any new program yet. We'll see what happens. I'll, I'll let you know when I find out. Uh, if Zachariah Branch is at practice, um, I'm sure he'll be one of the requested players on offense. Tyron Ware-Hudson, he's the oldest wide receiver. A lot of times you like to talk to uh, the older statesmen and get their impression on how the younger guys are doing. What about Elijah Page or Mason Murphy, Gino Quinones? 
I think all of them are, are candidates to line up against the wall. One of my favorite guys that I love to talk to, offensive lineman, Cooper Lovelace. The guy loves the microphone. And he's he's just he's full of energy. And he always has some good practice anecdote uh, that gives us a real a good chuckle. Cooper's a really fun guy to talk about, uh, talk with, not talk about. Um, those, so again, those are the usual suspects as far as the players are concerned. I mentioned Dennis Simmons. Lincoln Riley's going to go first, and then Coach Simmons, and then they'll bring up the players. Hopefully not all at once. Uh, myself, Eric McKinney, Scott Schrader from WeRSC.com, we're all going to be there. But I bring that up because sometimes there might be four players lined up against the wall at one time. That makes it a little difficult to get everybody uh, on camera. The starting quarterback usually gets his own time. So Miller, I think, is going to have to adjust to, uh, into his new role. He won't be lined up with everybody. He shouldn't be. He should get the same respect that Caleb Williams got and every other starting quarterback before him. Again, I will be there. I'll be taking my notes and observations. So you'll want to make sure you're back here for every episode of Locked on USA. Like I said, don't forget to subscribe, like, notify. This is your place to get all of your news, all your Trojan information right here every day. Oh, and before we uh, segue out of this segment, breaking up um, spring practice this week. So Tuesday, Wednesday is pro day. Thursday, you've got practice again. I'll be out there for pro day as well. Caleb Williams is going to be throwing some passes. I, is Chicago, the Bears, are they the team to beat, or is it going to be the Washington Redskins? I can't call them the commanders. I'm sorry. Smart, the smart money would say it's going to be the Bears uh, since they traded away Justin Fields for what? A sixth-round draft pick in a bag of chips? Man. Like I said. I will be surprised if Chicago does not make Caleb Williams the number one overall draft pick, adding to USC's total. Again, that's Wednesday Pro Day. I'll let you know what's going on there as well. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. All right, I'm going to kind of jump all over the place in this third segment. It's kind of a catch-all. The first couple of years with Caleb Williams at the helm playing quarterback, USC's offense um, should not, shouldn't have needed uh, to rely on special teams in case they were in any close games. Shouldn't have happened to uh, depend on that. Uh, USC didn't lose any of their five games last year. Um, because Dennis Lynch missed a field goal or an extra point. However, USC is in the big conference now. The games might come down to a field goal or an extra point. So, and I'm not picking on Dennis Lynch. This is kind of a special teams thing. Uh, Dennis is going to have to improve, though, on what he did last year. There's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Um, Dennis has been pretty good during his USC career, but he's also been inconsistent. Last year, specifically, was it wasn't his best. He was uh, just 10 for 14 for, for, uh, on field goals. And what, that's 71%, 71.5%. That, uh, the tight end for 81st in the nation. That's the lower echelon. Now, when I say inconsistent, he was three for three from deep when he went beyond 40 yards, including a 53 yarder. His accuracy, perfect. It's his mid range golf game that trips him up. Well, me too. Pretty much everybody who golfs. Um, but it's 
it's it's the easy ones that that give Dennis the menace his issues. He needs to do better uh, than going five for eight when you're kicking him from the between thirty to thirty nine yards. Those are chippies. Those are long extra points. Now, when you see Dennis, the last thing you think of is that dude's a Division One football player. I mean, if, look, if we're being honest, Dennis would agree. Um, and I, I say this with affection. He would be the perfect Notre Dame leprechaun. Red hair, his size. He likes to dress eclectic, I guess is a one way of putting it. Dennis has a really uh, wide ranging um, closet of clothes. If you've ever seen him do his Trojan walk, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. And Coach Riley always talks about um, how Dennis is the, one of the hardest working guys he's ever seen around uh, when it comes to special teams. Now, with taking that into consideration, the defense is going to be better for USC in 2024. Because it's almost impossible to be worse than they were in 2023. <laughs> so, does Lincoln O'Reilly go conservative early with the play calling? And that that's a huge if. Um, how many games in the first half will be decided by special teams? So, again, if Coach Riley decides, hey, you know what, I'm going to play it close to the vest. Huge if. Because I don't think that's in his DNA on offense. He didn't hold back in the in the bowl game, so why would he in the big conference, right? Um, how many games, though, in those in the first half of the season, you think are going to be decided by special teams? Is the game against LSU going to come down to the wire? Is it going to be decided by a field goal? Possible. Um, the Michigan game close? I don't know. Maybe. And I think only because Michigan's new head coach, Sharon Moore, is going to try and keep USC's offense off the field. So the the best thing USC's kickers can do to, to help the defense, and I, I've said this before, kick the ball through the back of the end zone, please, every single time. The Trojans finished the 2022 season uh, with 43% uh, on the touchback rate. Last year, that dropped to 29%. Not sure what happened. Really, I'm not sure what happened there. It almost sounds like that would be by design. To lose 14 percentage points? Oh, and Sarah, here's another thing that, that dropped off last year. Kickoffs going out of bounds. They only had two in 2022. We had four last year. Nothing changed. Ryan Doherty is still the special teams consultant analyst. All right. Oh, the roster. It's finally out. Came out uh, Monday night. The day before spring camp. Uh, Luke Heward. He is listed as the quarterback's coach. There's just one wide receiver coach this year, and that's Dennis Simmons. Here's a couple of more quick updates for you. Uh, Deuce Robinson, he's switching to number two jersey. So is Isaiah Rakes. And he has he's listed at a very precise 313 pounds. <laughs> Your defensive tackle, nose tackle, Isaiah Rakes is going to wear number two. And I'm wondering if it was a typo, 313 or 331. But even 331 is precise. 313. I've never seen that listed before. <laughs> Anyways. I found that interesting. Uh, here's a couple other uh, jersey number updates. Woody Marks and Easton Mascarenas Arnold inside middle linebacker. They're both going to wear jersey number four. Kamari Ramsey, he took over Kalen Bullock's old number and probably his starting spot too. He'll wear number seven. Uh, a couple of other doubled up numbers. Jacoby Lane, Zion Branch, they're going to share number eight. Number 14, Quarterback, Jaden Mayava and Jacoby Covington. Number 18, Eric Gentry. Joe Wilson took over Jude, Ols uh, Jude Wolf's old tight end number, 18. Xavier Jordan, John Humphrey, 19. Um, the number 21 is going to have two freshmen wearing it. Running back, Brian Jackson, and linebacker, Desmond Stevens. 
Marion Peterson, running back. He traded in his 27 for number 22. I'm not going to go over it all. Uh, the roster is up online. Go check it out. I'm going to have a full notes and observation report from the first day of spring camp. So you will definitely be back here for another episode of Locked on USC tomorrow. And when you're not here, you're over there on WeRSC.com. Now's the time. If you haven't become a VIP subscriber, spend a dollar. Check it out. Best investment you'll ever make. All right. So until then, everyone, you know what to do.